Well, good morning, you guys. You just saw Ace's head. I'm in a house and you guys are probably wondering if you haven't seen the last couple of episodes, why I am not in the RV. Let me explain. At the beginning of this trip, Brooklyn and I said if somebody donated a certain amount of money, we would have to sleep outside the RV for the night. A couple days ago, we had Heritage by Mindy donate $20,000, which is crazy because that is so many period products. It's gonna help so many people. It's gonna help end period period poverty. But that also meant we had to sleep outside the RV. We decided to reach out to one of our followers and see if we could stay at their house. And it worked. And we met the nicest family. We are going to go eat breakfast and then we are going to go on our way because it's day 13 of our trip and we have a lot more states we gotta hit today. I like. Holy cow. When I say I slept like a rock. I mean like I literally flipped the covers back and when I woke up I hadn't touched or moved any other part of the bed, which means I had just lain in the exact position I fell asleep in. <laughs> oh. How was y'all's night? It was quiet. <laughs> it's really quiet. <laughs> Carrie always says, Brooklyn and I bring the noise. When I was still at home and they came back from college, it was like way louder. I'll take that as a compliment. Of course, we wanted to say thank you to Heather and her family for housing us, letting us stay in their bed and just letting us eat their food. And so we built this basket and it felt fitting because it was heritage that brought us to them. So it felt fitting to make a basket of heritage and to give it to them, so. Here we go, basket acquired. That's a word, right? Acquired? Sounds weird when you say it. <laughs> okay, we wanted to say thank you. Oh, we are so And it felt fitting to do Heritage because they kicked us out, so. Oh, oh we're Heritage so fans. And thank y'all so you much for, sweet. for having thank us. You guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, we are back in the good old RV. Francesca. Go. We are back to you. We are now headed to the Nebraska Iowa border that's our next stop so let's go okay we are here at a bridge this, this time a little bit different than our normal state sign things because we're knocking off two states in one go yes yeah, so this is a bridge that covers Nebraska and Iowa and there's like a line so we're gonna go and film over there and apparently the bridge's name is Bob hi I'm Bob I'm a bridge. We are on our way to Concord, Nebraska, and Iowa. You know, I feel like I'm learning a lot about geography. I'm not good at I it. I am geographically challenged. Yes, and I feel like doing this is actually helping me learn where the states are. You are so liars if you can say you can name where all 50 states are. Liars. Can you name them? It's obvious you never played the map game. Clear, you never played Stack the States. I can play Stack the States and I know where like half of them go. What say you, Asa? I could do all of them. What? Let's test that theory. No, he's wrong. He's We're absolutely back on the RV. Let's test that theory. <laughs> I'm in Nebraska. Now I'm in Iowa. Nebraska, Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa. <laughs> We've already done Nebraska because that's where we spent the night. And Iowa, unfortunately, we're just passing through because we've got North and South Dakota and Minnesota to see today. So Iowa, we love you. Goodbye. It says great faces, great, great places. places. That is so there funny. There you go, South Dakota. South Dakota, South Dakota, South Dakota, South Dakota. Yay! Okay, time for us to take the states test, like Bailey said. I am gonna take it first, although Bailey cannot watch me take it because she can't know. This is embarrassing. All right, y'all. I got a 57%. <laughs> it really is those like states around Florida that I was like, wait, which one is this? I don't know. Here goes nothing. I don't know which one this is. Okay. I got 60%. I did better than I thought I was going to. No, the real kicker is Asa, who said he could get 100% of them correct. Hey. Oh, I thought you were putting a cheese it down my shirt. I chose the wrong one for Wyoming. 
this is my score. They're all so sad about it. They're ignoring the fact that I just crushed them. We are in South Dakota and we are at Sioux, I think is how you say it, Sioux Falls. So apparently this is like a, a really beautiful site here in South Dakota and so we thought we'd come in and check it out. Intrusive thoughts I have to just throw myself into that water right now. It looks dirty but I'm so hot. It would feel so good. Just before anybody comes for us, we are coming back to Mount Rushmore. We just are. just stay tuned. But for now, Sioux Falls. I said if you lay down right here and you sit in the sun, you'll sizzle and be a human piece of bacon. <laughs> it's so hot. I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh, the cartwheel saga. I thought this was an interview saga. They don't even know. Oh, oh, oh they don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Brooklyn just said that I stay in the same position the whole time. I'm gonna try to do like professional cartwheel. Is that better? With the phone. With the phone. All right, tuning in to our daily fact check. We've got some interesting state facts ready. Go. What was my name? That Kansas City. Oh, okay, Kansas City is the city that has the most fountains besides Rome. Fact check, fact check. My next fact is that, um, that Nebraska is the only state to be triple landlocked. Fact check, fact check. Triple landlocks means that there are three states before you hit water on all sides of Nebraska. That's the only one. And it's the only state. All right. Fact check. Anything else? Apparently the town we're currently in in South Dakota, the town we're going to in North Dakota. Oh, North Dakota, sorry. is known for having painted bison all around the town. I don't know if that's really a fact. We're but gonna try to find some. Bison, here we come. Hi, son, bison. Bison. Boy, so all day, son. All day. All day. All day. All day, son. <laughs> the weakest chest bump there ever was. Gotta get my Dr. Pepper. Gotta get my Dr. Pepper. Uh, if I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys, we were so busy yesterday I didn't get my Dr. Pepper. So I filmed two clips for today's video to make up for it. And I put on the jacket to pretend like I'm in a different outfit. How do I always end up in this position? <laughs> Nobody knows what's happening here. And I think they're trying to do a TikTok and I don't think it's working out. I don't know what the point of this is. Asus is trying to hide himself. Go. And go. North Dakota, <laughs> North Dakota. <laughs> anyway, we are stopping in a place called Fargo. I think we're gonna try and pop in for some dinner, see some fun things. North Dakota, here we come. Where's Dakota when you Where's here? Dakota? Dakota magic. Okay, here's Asa watching the daily vlog. I love that you watch them. Well, I love watching them. And it helps me remember what we did three days ago. Since we've started this, we have had so many influencer friends reach out just saying, how can they be a part of it? And one of those people is someone that I have seen on TikTok over and over and over again. And I love the stuff that she does. She, she's very like open about periods, which is really cool. So if you guys know who it is, her name is Nadia. And she did send us a little clip to add into this video. So we're gonna cut her in here. Hi there, I'm Nadia Okamoto and I'm the co-founder and CEO of a brand called August. We make more 
most sustainable tampons and pads. While most period products take five to eight centuries to decompose, August pads are fully biodegradable within 12 months. So we're really all about making more sustainable period care that actually works. So you might have seen me on TikTok. I'm usually there doing a lot of educational videos about periods, just trying to talk about periods a lot more. I thought I'd talk a little bit about the issue of period poverty and also just some, you know, frequently answered que asked questions we get about periods. So one of the most common questions I get about period poverty is who does period poverty affect? And I think it is a really interesting conversation because period poverty is not just something that affects one small subset of the population. Period poverty is something that goes hand in hand with poverty in general. Affording period products should be an absolute right because period products are a necessity. If anybody is struggling to afford basic necessities and resources that they need, whether it be shelter, food, or period products, like that is period poverty. And so this is something that permeates every single community, especially communities where there are menstruators and more menstruators of marginalized communities as well. It is such a important thing that we all take a step to address period poverty and more so period stigma as well. Because in order to talk about the issue, we have to talk about period. So whenever I get asked like how you can take small actions to just have this conversation, a lot of it is just bringing up with your friends, with your family members, what period poverty is, or even talking about your own period, not being afraid to ask the questions that you've always had about your period. So a lot of what we're trying to do in August is just create this more open conversation about periods. There are so many questions out there and I never want anyone to feel embarrassed to ask questions or anything like that. Anyways, I hope that I get to meet so many of you in the future, whether it be online or in person. Bye. We have officially landed in Fargo, which is the city we are going to be spending some time in, in North Dakota. North Dakota, I couldn't remember which Dakota we were in for a second. We found this really cool Mario wall. So we're gonna go see what that's all about. Bison number one, painted bison number one. Let's see how many we can find. I don't really know how many are here, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna try. Do you know how long a period typically lasts? in the actual wild. We've got Asa McKnight Howard posing on the Mario Wall in Fargo, North Dakota. Ooh yeah, ooh yeah, ooh yeah, yeah. So do you know what period poverty is? Yes, I did a speech about it in school Tell last me about year. It. Oh, it's sure. just like how period products are taxed more than other products and a lot of women can't even afford them and there's a shortage right now. Name as many tampon slash feminine product brands as possible in 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Tampax, yes. Playtex, 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 Tampax, Radiance, Oh, um, Secret, oh, the no, Diva Secret, um, um, I don't know the brand. brand. Um, it's a I don't Target know the brand. brand. Uh, I don't yeah. know, I don't I know anymore. All. Time, nice. <laughs> I'm carrying my brownie. Can I actually put hot This is so good, it had good ratings. We wanted to try it. This is simply my life motto. Ice cream solves everything. Don't argue with me, it's true. Okay, so we have officially finished up in Fargo, which means we are done with North Dakota. Um, we are gonna drive next to the Minnesota border. We're not spending much time in Minnesota, unfortunately, but we're coming to see your state sign. <laughs> wow. I sincerely apologize for that interruption. Anyway, we only got to see. <laughs> I never burped to us, Brooklyn. This is true. But you got it on video, a rare occurrence. We only got to see one bison, so we were sad because there's apparently like 30 something of them in the city of Fargo. Also, the city of Fargo is apparently the biggest city in North Dakota. Fact check. North Dakota. Where are you at? Because that was not that big of a city. On we go to Minnesota. Minnesota, Minnesota. These songs are getting progressively worse and worse as we go. Minnesota! And this is the coolest sign so far, I think. I'll take a mini soda, Minnesota. We love you, but we're coming and going because we got more driving to do. Goodbye, Minnesota. He's done this at every state line. <laughs> Every single one. Well, hello. Hello. We finished.
finished up in Fargo and we ended up having a little bit longer drive than we thought because we have a very fun activity happening tomorrow. So we decided to do some late night driving. Um, we're all very tired and it's time for donations. It looks like today we hit $134,500. That is so awesome. And of course, this is all from you guys. So just keep donating. The more you donate, the more we can help people. You guys can donate in the link in our description box or you can just subscribe to our channel and we'll donate on your behalf. And we did create a new goal. We want to try to hit 200,000 before the end of our trip. So we'd love to see those donations keep coming in. It just goes to help a ton of people. And we'll have to get tattoos. If we hit 200,000, we do get tattoos. So uh, go donate. Go we'll donate. see. And since we have such a late night, this is going to count as our good night for the night. We will see y'all in the morning. Good night, y'all.